Hello and welcome to the Ramon Foster Show, starring Ramon Foster in Hendersonville, Tennessee. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports in downtown Pittsburgh. Over there, by, over my shoulder. See, he doesn't have the Hendersonville, Tennessee skyline. Skyline is know. more like hills, you know? More like hills. And, like and hills, the, actual hills, or hills, the old department store? I, to my left, I'm looking at my office window right now. There is a nice hill over there, man. And I'm saying to myself... That cow is gonna fall down. It. <laughs> Wait, like, you I'm, have a cow? I don't, but like the people that own like the land next to me have one. Man, it's um, it's it's across the way right there, man. Pretty pretty cool, pretty cool. Uh, and you hear them moving and stuff all the time. It's weird. I'm like right right past the city line, so people right past the city line like me. One, we don't pay city taxes. I'm gonna throw that out there real quick. Uh, we pay county taxes only. But with that being said, you have farms around me and stuff like we're a little bit less developed than the other side of town. I mean, the cow doesn't know the difference. The cow just want to eat his grass and not get the struck cow by just lightning. Wants to eat grass, you know. <laughs> the the <laughs> cow is not a complex individual. Let's uh, let's ring that bell before this gets more ridiculous. <laughs> it should. <laughs> How did I resist the temptation to say, let's move on? Let's move on. <laughs> before this yeah. show becomes an utter disgrace. Be like, be, be, be like, be like Greg right here. Go ahead. Greg says, hey, Mo, you He's should totally utterly, get a cow. Yeah. It would be utterly great. A moosing event. See, there you go. This oh, is what man. happens when we open that door like that, DK. Is we, yeah, yes. that, yeah, it's, it's just clown shoes around here for sure here. It's um, justifiably today. Yeah, uh, we're, we're, we're now stuck with all kinds of cows. <laughs> the one thing that cows don't have, though, is this, Moan. What's that, DK? A hump day. Uh, no, they do not, man. Welcome to Wednesday. We halfway through this thing, man. You know where else you hear cow noises at? Mm. It's whenever this one particular guy catches a football in the stadium and they've resorted to a moo. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> cool race. <Speaking> this, <laughs> shout out to you. of the segues. <laughs> All right. I'll tell you who uh, else would love what we got in store for him today, too. Hmm. Mooth, as we discuss. That's right. Pal. Quarterbacks, DK. We're talking about quarterbacks, but we're going to do it in a little bit of a different way. Enough of the side drama and this and that and who said what to whom and when. And what to do. I don't know if you're bringing in yeah. the quarterback who might be the most mobile, the most dangerous runner at his position in the entire world, how do you let him stand on your sideline? How Some do you would just Grab a helmet. Uh, some would argue. Yeah. Some would argue Mar Mar Lamar Jackson when it comes down to that conversation. But yeah. he's yeah, been more. Age, he's been less yeah. of a runner. Yes, he has been less yeah. of a runner, man. Um, I, we we discussed this um just a little bit, and I've had this conversations with others, right? About what do you do with a Justin Fields who's under contract, the highest paid quarterback on roster, by the way, too, DK. Uh, mm -hmm. Who want to say how you fleeced them again? Yeah, I hear that. So, so what? What? With that being said, DK, there has to be something for him because you gotta have reps on the job in today's NFL. You gotta be able to say either you, you're paying a crazy amount of attention to what Russ is doing, or you gotta incorporate him into the field of play in some capacity. The issue is if what adjusting goes in and does well, right? What if what's the, what if Justin Fields goes in and he's actually slinging the ball better than than uh than Russell Wilson is? That's where you get into trouble. A two quarterback system. I don't think Arthur Smith's ever done that. Um, I hadn't seen him do it here in Tennessee. What I have seen him do is go from one quarterback to another, as far as Desmond Ritter goes, and try to do similar things. When you're asking me the playmaking ability of Justin, I told you this the other day when we discussed where he would be at, is I don't want him running too much, DK. 
But his ability to extend plays and be safe when it comes down to breaking runs, which he's proven he can do. He did it this past year in Chicago. He's a threat. The same way we felt about Lamar Jackson with his ability to extend plays. I always say playing in the NFL, specifically the NFL up until late, you're really playing 10 on 11 because most quarterbacks elect not to run. With a guy like Justin Fields, right. he adds the 11th player factor to your game. And I, would, I wouldn't throw even throw Russ in that conversation, DK, because Russ is more of an older style. He's going to create in the backyard. He's going to run seven yards and slide. But yeah. the conversation of having the conversation of having packages or series for Justin Fields, if you're going to do it, it needs to consistently happen. Then we don't have a quarterback one. We have a quarterback tandem. And I don't know if we've ever seen that work in today's NFL. The only way we've seen that work, DK, and it was fractured even then, is Drew Brees and Taysom Hill. But even that wasn't the Taysom Hill, if I remember correctly, wasn't he just used on like plunges or fourth downs? I mean, eventually, I think they got him a little bit more involved. But, you know, you've mentioned something in the past about these situations where it, it's it's it can advertise to the opponent what you're doing. It does. And the opponent can react accordingly. Am I right? You, yes, you've experienced that. Yep. But but with that, DK, um, I see somebody in the comments just put up Lamar Jackson. I mean, Lamar Jackson and Joe Flacco. There are moments for it. My, my, my thing is this when it comes down to Justin Fields, right? That was systemic. When Baltimore did it. It was it was different. They were that was deliberate in and out changing on. I mean, it was I mean, they were trying to scare the hell out of people with Lamar. And they did, by the way, except my for one team. They said for one thing. My thing is this when it comes down to it. One, Arthur Smith has to really, really prove himself now. If he's going to go back into that role of being a, a offensive coordinator that people loved, people was heralding as being the next guy, and he wants to solidify himself, a Bruce Arians type, right? This guy knows how to call plays. Then he's got to figure out what's the balance between doing the both, okay? The, the thing that, that I think we're up against when it comes down to Justin Fields to me DK, is this. I don't know if we have enough time with Justin Fields to actually play both sides either. What's because that here's the thing. We, we know this. He's had a crap show of offense when it comes down to his coaches in Chicago and his offensive coordinators. I was having a conversation with somebody today at my day job, and we were discussing, well, the issue with Justin Fields is He's not have a stable offensive coordinator that can teach, that can show, that can help him grow. Like the thing about just uh, uh, uh about uh what's his name in Buffalo is Josh Allen in Buffalo is this. For the first four years he was in Buffalo, you know what was the same for him? Brian Dable. Yeah. Brian Dable. Mm -hmm. We don't have that luxury of time with Justin unless Justin's going to say to himself, I'm willing to take a very cheap price as far as them extending me in a contract year and learn and become a better pro over the longevity of my career, as opposed to saying, play me right now. And that's why I say working the two quarterback system for Justin Fields and, and, and uh, Russell Wilson, I don't know if we have that luxury because to me, Justin has to learn. I see what you're saying. And, and, to where and you got to slow his process down. If you bring him in, and let's say you commit, this is going to sound over the top, but just hear it out. You commit to just a basic reconstruct of the player, of the quarterback. Of the and quarterback. you say there are a lot of things that he did in Chicago that have to be exorcised from his system, okay? That he has to, he has to just have all those demons out and then start over. My understanding boy, this is also going to sound a little unfair, was that the Bills did this with Mitch Trubisky when he had to decompress following his time in Chicago as a quarterback. And then they had to teach Mitch all over again how to quarterback. They felt like they had him in a good spot. That was part of what convinced Kevin Colbert to go get him. And, uh, yeah, no. Yeah, no. 
So the, the question was, <laughs> yeah, heck no, is what you tell him, okay? He's a backup. I don't I don't look at Justin Fields as it stands right now as a backup. I look at him as a, a star that can bud into something crazy, DK, but it got it has to be treated the right way. The same way, DK, I truly feel about um watching Tua. Tua to a lot of people, Tua Tagovailoa was a guy that everybody wrote off until he met Mike McDaniels. This is until accurate. He, until he got Tyreek Hill and, and until Waddle came into the case, until they got their offensive line grew up, which took a hit in free agency. I think Connor Williams from the ACL is still hurt, and Robert Hunt just left, I think, to another team in free agency for 50 plus million dollars at guard. Okay. But Tua was written off DK when it came down to his career until he met the right person. Is, in your opinion, and I probably should answer this one before you do. Arthur Smith, the guy to take Justin Fields and Russell Wilson over the top. I think so. Yeah, so I mean, I, I I can't even come close to answering that or attempting to answer it. I, I well, just, here's the thing. This is what's been proven. Justin Fields is a vet now. So is Russell Wilson. Ryan Tannehill came to the Titans through a dra- through a, a, a trade, if I'm not mistaken, and he turned into an all pro hundred million dollar quarterback. He understands what's the method in doing it. And he also knows what failure looks like in Atlanta. He's got way too much on his plate as far as Arthur Smith goes to mess this up for those guys because there are other people that wanted Justin Fields, right? And he was a yes. top 10 pick for a reason. Oh, yeah. Marching him out there, I don't think it's the smartest thing, although I like him as a weapon. But his ability to learn and grow as a frigging quarterback because here's the thing. He was at Georgia, transfers out of Georgia, go to Ohio State and immediately start playing. You know what I'm saying? Like there is mm-hmm. that component of it too is where has home been for a guy like him? He's had zero balance. <clears throat> Russ's situation is way different to me because Russ has been to the mountaintop and back. Somehow he got lost, whether that be his play, his locker room, and I will continually point sh- fingers at Sean Payton. I hadn't got off of that. I don't care what anybody thinks I of him. I can tell. Yeah. I do think there's narratives there that Sean Payton just simply didn't want him because he was signed before he got the job or he was a package deal that he really didn't want to sign off on. So he's making the Waltons eat 80 plus million dollars. You know, where Fields is concerned, if, if he gets out there, if he gets to partake in the offense, I guess one of the things that makes me a little bit cringy is the idea that it has to be, we just had somebody use the term gadget, or those kinds of you know clever plays where you're disguising something. Why couldn't he just come onto the field and just be himself for a play or two or for a series? Do you see what I'm saying? Isn't that enough of a change of pace? Isn't that a whoa? Hey, this guy's different. Uh, we we have to handle him a little bit differently. This isn't the way we prepared. Do you see what I'm saying? Even if he's just running a conventional offense, I don't see why you have to slash him. Is what I'm saying. As I don't see why you. He, he, yeah, I just he can just be he can just be your second quarterback. Well, well, well that's the your thing. first no. quarterback. However, it works out. DK, he can sling it though. I I I know he's got. And he can he can the run. The toolkit is is full. <laughs> and, and and that's the thing about overexposing him with Russ in front of him. You run into the same situation that I think we had when it comes down to Kenny and Mason, right? One is strong as the other, and if one has a good day, everybody's going to be begging and asking for Justin Fields, which may not be a bad thing because at the end of the day, $1.2 million is all you're paying Russ. But the idea that Russ will get better and settle also DK this team, this offense is to me unstable as heck when it comes down to, and I say this respectfully, but there is no apparent leader on that offense. Najee, you brought him up the other day. Like, maybe this is a mentorship. And I saw somebody ask that. I start that question, too. Some, some, is, this, is this a bigger mentorship than anything for Russell Wilson? But Russell Wilson also needs this team, this coach, to solidify his Hall of Fame status and to continue on in his career. I think there's another deal for Russ if Russ goes out and crush it. Then you really up against it because he can look at Pittsburgh and say, I showed y'all love. I'm, I'm, I should be here in this city, and you should pay me. There's a lot that goes behind Russell having a good year and also Justin's just sitting back and watching them have a good year too because then the commitment comes into it. Their biggest issue, as cheap as they are right now, 
in the next two years will be money at the quarterback position. And you don't even know what you have as far as Justin goes. As a franchise guy with that level of commitment, you'll have to give him. Yeah, Ronald says, what's the problem with being slash? I, I, I think, Ron, what we're talking about here is a, a different type of case here. When you saw – Ramon mentioned Taysom Hill in New Orleans. When you saw Taysom Hill come onto the field, you knew what he was going to do because he but could you only all, do one thing. Can I interrupt you there? You also yeah. saw Drew Brees and the look on his face. He hated it. And then it. there was that. He hated it. And and so it didn't particularly work. I mean, it worked okay. It wasn't anything great. It wasn't anything that New Orleans really needed. Certainly not something worth the headache of ticking off the resident Hall of Famer. But that's not who Justin Fields is. Justin Fields is a real live NFL quarterback. Does he have issues? Does he have progress that he needs to be made? You know, I've been saying for weeks now that my big concern about him is that heavy, crazy number of turnovers, which is why I kept stating again and again, I don't, and I didn't and don't believe that the Steelers would have brought him in to be their starter, okay? Yeah. But he's a real live quarterback. He can do a lot of different things with a lot of different skill sets, and I don't want to stifle that, Ron. That's what I'm saying. So the, the question before we have to go into the break and go to the Hey Moan session is this. If we had to pick, DK, and listeners, um, y'all write them in the comments. It's over 800 in here right now. Hit that like and subscribe button. If we were to ask which quarterback do you want, what percentage do you think would be Russ? What percentage do you think would be Jeez. Justin, too? Because Jeez. the answer I have, and I'll give mine first, is I don't know. I don't. How much of it was true with Russ in Denver and Seattle? And is it a Justin problem when it comes down to running an offense? I think the answer to me is you probably be 40, 60 in any direction if you want it Justin or if you want it Russ. Because here's the thing behind it. I've seen the right coordinators of Brian Dayball, right? I've seen the right coordinators of Mike McDaniels, right? I've seen Andy Reid with the right quarterback. I've seen all these people with the right guys turn into stars. So maybe it was a little bit of their coordinators, their coaches, and everybody wants to believe they can save a former first rounder when it comes down to Justin. I, I want to start with Russ, and I go to Justin if I had to midway through the season. Tomlin haters, please go join Kenny, says James. Is, I don't happened? even know what he's referring to here. Uh, cool Ray says, I have not seen two quarterbacks work out meaning two simultaneous quarterbacks. There aren't many examples. This isn't like running back where you can have a rhythm the way you guys did, uh, and famously so with Le'Veon Bell and D'Angelo Williams, in large part because you guys knew how to adjust from series to series, uh, and a set of downs to set of downs yeah. with those guys, the way they would get utilized. That's not quarterback. You've got guys stepping up in different directions or stepping out in different directions. Uh, or just holding their pocket. And that's I, – I really worry about that from the offensive line standpoint. Uh, it would be tough, but at the same time, I'm going to say it again, Moan. Say it. How do you leave him just standing there on the sideline when you know he's a better athlete than anybody else who's out there? <laughs> How do you do that? Oh, so through, <laughs> through, when it's through three years with Justin Fields, um, before we have to go into this break, his completion percentage is just over 60%. He's got 40 touchdowns and 30 interceptions. He also has how many fumbles? Uh, it doesn't say how many fumbles and had last year, 55 sacks and 44 given up this year. I'll contribute some of that to him simply running out of bounds behind the line of scrimmage and sacks too. He does have to fix that for a lot of people have been saying Justin Fields is a turnover machine. Yes. 100%. He has to fix that. I do think understanding and slowing down the pace of what a team needs from a quarterback does help with that too. The issue with Justin Fields has been this for the last three years. Chicago sucks. Okay? As a product on the field. That's and, not just three years, but yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, but to think that a young rookie is going to be your savior when you don't surround them. They're just now starting to get their offensive line together. Their defense had its moments of ups and downs. They traded away other players. They traded for guys who are one-stop shops, like the guy they traded for last year, um, 
from the uh, when they fleeced uh, the Carolina Panthers, the wide receiver from that mm -hmm. team last year. You look at him, he was the only option when it comes down to what they were capable of doing. So with that being said, you look at them and say to yourself, the lack of weapons makes your job hard too, right? When you break all of that down, and that's what's most frustrating in trying to judge a guy like him into what he can do. DJ Moore is that, that wide receiver, by the way. And I'm with Jay Boy. Competition. Well, I mean, that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out, too. Nothing's been declared on that front the way it very clearly was whenever it was going to be Russ versus or Russ and Kenny Pickett. Uh, that was a competition for all of about four or five minutes, and, and yeah. then it wasn't. So when we come back, we're going to we're going to get to the only segment that actually matters. The rest of this and, didn't. And no bell, but this hey, mom. Yeah, what was the bell about? He I was out the I bell was, on this yesterday. I was busy researching, man. That's what uh, I was doing. I got caught. I got caught lacking. At DK Pittsburgh Sports, we take pride in coverage that connects our city's fans to their favorite teams. Now, that connection's stronger than ever. Introducing our all-new state-of-the-art app. Find expert inside reporting and original podcasts. Check live box scores. Track the latest stats. Chat it up with our community of thousands of fans, all in one place. The new app from DK Pittsburgh Sports. Coverage that connects. And Stephen opens us up here by pointing out the 38 career fumbles. That's the, the statistic that is, is commonly cited related to fields. 40 touchdowns, 38 fumbles, not the healthiest ratio. Oh. And to that, Rick says, hey, Moan. How do you get Fields to stop the turnovers? How do you coach that? What have you seen in the past when somebody has a fumble problem? That run around the pocket stuff, holding the ball with one hand, that lack of pocket awareness for a guy like him. Um, again, and I told you guys that the fact that he feels like you probably have to play hero ball in a city like Chicago, that is, and say what you want to about him, rich when it comes to football history and the need to want to win. So the that Bears pressure, fans, oh yeah, yes, Chicago, that, yeah, they're not I, an I expansion would, team. I'm looking at clips right now, I, and I like to do this stuff in real time with you guys. They're playing against the Bengals right now. Sack fumble on him. Is that on him, or is that because his left tackle got his butt whipped too? There's context to a lot of this, and I don't want to even start the excuse making because y'all never let me make excuses if I had a bad game in Pittsburgh. Okay, so with that being the case. His fumbles have been a lot of guys in his face, sacks on him. Now, that may break down to a teaching a guy like him, hey, pressure, tuck the ball. Again, he went from Georgia to Ohio State. What has his teaching been? And in almost every stop that he's had, it's been Justin. Go do that little thing that you do and be an athlete. How much has he been taught to step up in the pocket? And one thing I will say, Mason, from the time I blocked with him in 2019 to where he was this past year, was two totally different guys. His ability yes, to protect the ball, stay in the pocket, deliver. Way different than what it was back then, okay? Oh, there, there's – Moan, that's zero to 60, night and day, black to white. I mean, you've just never seen – he was – Mason Rudolph was the worst example of the happy feet. I'm looking at a clip right now that has 4,800 uh, views on, on, on YouTube right now. And it's about Justin Fields, is he a bust? And it shows his fumbles. Every single one of his fumbles was a collapsed pocket so far and guys around him swiping him. And him doing that thing that he does as far as trying to extend and make plays with the ball loose in his hands. If you ask me, is that fix fixable? One, protection. Key. Two, knowing the clock. The ball's got to go. NFL open is right now. And three, if you feel pressure, live for the next down. Hmm. So, yes, it's fixable. But that the same way we wanted Kennedy to stop rolling that left to create sacks, that falls on him as a quarterback to correct that little glitch that he has in his game. I ain't excuse yeah, me. I'm just giving you more context. Yeah, there, there's going to be you know, all kinds of judgments, including the one from Don in here about how he has bad mechanics. We just had one up that said that you know he's he has trouble reading the field. Let's just uh, – here's here's how I am with this right now, okay? I I said my piece about Russell Wilson when he was signed, okay? 
I got it out of my system. I said exactly what I felt in that moment. I thought the whole thing was really kind of botched. However, however, he's here. He's here. Okay. Justin Fields is here. As, I, I, as far as I'm concerned, and I almost have to do this as a reporter, <laughs> I've got a clean slate here. Okay. Now you tell me from, from the perspective of someone with 11 years in an NFL locker room, do they enter, both of them enter with a clean slate? Do they, do they, meaning, meaning both good, bad, whatever. Okay. Do they, do they walk in there and you say, all right, well, look, I know who Russell Wilson is. There's obviously going to be an instant respect factor. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I know Justin Fields is excitement and dynamical is whatever else, but do they go in there where you're thinking, yeah, but what about that thing in, you know, where Seattle and Denver are paying you a zillion dollars in dead cap hit, or what about your 5,000 fumbles? What, what do the players say? The players take it as a blank slate almost every single time. Anytime a new player really? that came well, from, yeah, hundred percent. Anytime another player came from a different team, whatever baggage they had never came out because we only see the person. And if the product on the field is good, and most times it was, then you take that guy for what he was and not from what he comes from, right? There's been players that come on our team that is just bad. You know what I'm saying? And you expect it. I'll say the one guy that's probably one of the most poor, polarizing free agents that we signed, LeGarrette Blunt. right? Hmm. Nobody I would say so. well, certainly with how it turned out, yeah. Exactly. But we loved LeGarrette Blunt. Nobody that's ever what brought I up. That's why you had me confused for a second. That's I remembered what, him being pretty popular in there. But a lot of people didn't like LeGarrette Blunt because of what mm -hmm. they thought he was. Until he did that to us, nobody had an issue whatsoever with LeGarrette. And even so, after the fact, guys have communicated with him. Wasn't a bad dude, made a terrible teammate decision. But you take them for what you are in that moment, right? So can a person mm -hmm. like that come back in that locker room? <laughs> Nah, oh, no, you, you, know, you walked out on us. <laughs> nah, you can't come back. Middle of a game. <laughs> but but who takes uh, the back seat? I think Justin takes the back seat first. Has to. He, he's got a says, lot more to learn. Hey Moan, do you think Mason Cole would would want to come back to the Steelers? Uh, I'm going to jump on that one first. Moan, obviously, his relationship and his fit with the Steelers from a personality standpoint was through the roof. He was outstanding in that component he also has the ability to play both center and guard he actually played both for significant stretches when he was with the vikings uh that said this scenario that you're describing steven probably would have been better handled as a restructure yeah okay because he wasn't cut because he was a terrible football player or whatever he was he was cut because he was going to make way too much money and not be the starter at yeah. center. So does he come back? Can he come back? How does a player feel like that? Yeah, you come back 100%. I've seen it happen yeah. before. Guys come back after they've been let go in other places. Ma uh, Mason did it last summer. Mason did it. Uh, uh, Mason, not this Mason. Mason Rudolph did it. Mason Rudolph. What do I usually say, DK? If you're sitting on the couch and they offer you oatmeal, you're probably going to eat it because oatmeal is better than no meal, is it not? <laughs> Still one of my favorites. By the way, you guys are hilarious. Okay, keep that comment right here, DK. But but uh -huh. look at Dwight. When I say y'all never gave me excuses, he said we offered you reasons if I had a bad game. <laughs> you remember I said y'all uh -huh. never let me off the hook if I had a bad game. He's like, no, we offered you reasons on why you had a bad game. You know what's cool is this is exactly the group who would have been able to tell you how the left guard fared that day. You and know I what I'm saying? Love it. And I love yeah. it, DK. It's, what this is this is the intensive uh, <laughs> this is the intensive portion of the fan base. Evan says, "Hey Moan, what would you do with the Fields contract situation, or can you not make any moves until you see how Russell Wilson goes?" Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, Fields' fifth year option is ready twenty five point six million dollars. Holy, uh -huh. um, that's a tough call, man. Because you want to still... invest. You want to invest in your future, but you got to have some glimpse of what it can be. And the, there's there's uh, stats and articles circulating now. I think Daniel Jeremiah is a guy that's doing a bunch of um, 2019 or was it 2020 to 2022 quarterbacks, and only two are starting. And I think that's Trevor Lawrence, and I think that's Brock Purdy from that group, and Justin Fields included in it. And finding the, your franchise guy has been harder and harder. And that's because, to me, stability, it does. What I do for Justin Fields' contract, 
as I tell Justin, man, you can go try and find your spot somewhere, or you can let us extend you out for a very team-friendly deal with an option if you hit an escalator as far as play, if you hit an option as far as production, that you get a bigger payday or do a year-by-year basis with him. I think the biggest, the, the, the best template that they have is what Green Bay did with Jordan Love. Extended him out, I think, for like $18 million or something like that. I'll get his numbers here in a minute, but it wasn't anything that was over the top when it comes down to them paying him. Our last one for today comes from Jaden Knight. He says, hey, Moan, with the, the Russell Wilson and Justin Fields signings, are we getting a glimpse of the vision that Arthur Smith is wanting the offense to take? Yes, one hundred percent. Yeah, he did the same thing. Or are with we Tana just Hill. seeing contract situations that happen mm. to be friendly to the Steelers? I don't know. No, he's following his trend. Tannehill was a former college wide receiver. I think people forget that because he I played at Texas that. A&M. Yeah, he played wide receiver. He played wide receiver in college. Wow! And switched over to quarterback and became a first round pick. Yes, he was a. He has college wide receiver stats. Wow. So. The reason for them trading for him was because he wanted a mobile quarterback in Tennessee. And he made Ryan Tannehill the best quarterback I think you've seen in his version of being quarterback. What did he do when he went to Atlanta? Immediately drafted a mobile quarterback in Desmond Ritter. So is that a sign to what's to come from this style of offense? Probably more side-to-side, drop-back, rollout type of stuff with efficiency for big chunk plays and playing the sideline and over the middle? Yeah, I think you'll see the ball spread out and mobilize through them. Yeah, I don't want to start going sideways. I know that. I, I've seen how sideways looks. You know, I, I want to see George Pickens get the football. I want to see whoever this next wide receiver it is that they get get the football. I want to see Pat Fryermuth get the football. I want to see, you know, if you're going to talk about being physical, yeah, go forward, go, go for, you know, be that. tough, go forward. You know, uh, we'll be right back after this little outro. It's going to be interesting to see it come together more than anything else, isn't it? I mean, that's that's the part that jumps out to me is like you just go, wow, this is there's so many different pieces. Yeah, it it really is, man. So real quick, just to give Justin Fields context, uh, well, Jordan Love context on what you would do with a Justin Fields contract Uh as it pertains to his contract. Spot track has Jordan Love signed a one year maximum twenty two point five million dollar extension. It actually is more than his fifth year option was, which is $20.2 million. The deal included $13.5 million full and guaranteed at signing. So he got a signing bonus. So he essentially got a one year $13 million deal that pushed up to over 22, I'm guessing, on certain incentives and stuff like that. Uh, he had an escalator as far as that was concerned in his contract. So there's ways of getting past the fifth year option, but you might have to just guarantee money is what happens behind that, too. You are a money guy. You've always been the money guy. You were that when you were playing. Because it's like crime. Follow it. Everybody we want answers. The, it's like reality TV to you. You knew it. Everybody was making. Follow <laughs> the position. money, DK. I'm telling you, that's <laughs> simply what it is, man. And, and in this context where you're trying to build a team, um, that's what you got to do. It's essentially what, uh, what what's the name just said a second ago. Who was it? I think you, De- Demond. I feel a sense of urgency. Sense I think of you're urgency. standing in the spend. Absolutely. Spending. I see. Yeah, they're not building for something three, four years from now. Uh, you know, they're they're doing it for right this second. You've got to you know, stay there's, there's stable. No question about that here. Uh, Chris Arkwright gets the last word. He says, I had a typo yesterday. Ramon's rookie cards came out in 2017. He did oh, say 2019 yesterday. I just okay. wanted to correct that for the record. I'm still trying to get an autographed one. He means since yesterday, Moan. We'll have to make sure we get you. Are you lagging one. since yesterday? You haven't gotten him a signed one. Hey, I'm just shocked it came out in 2017. I mean, come on, come on. Good year for you guys. I had to prove myself. Uh, rookie contract, I guess. Undrafted free agents got to wait a while. DK, I make big enough plays. You always have to work a little extra harder at everything. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. We'll um, be back. We- 
We had a question right. come in too. No, oh, you, we've you already grabbed the outro. More? Yeah, we just did the outro. Levi came in. Hey, Moan, do you? How do you oh, think okay. Wilson and Fields will handle St. Vincent? My biggest testament to St. Vincent is it takes you to football and football only. You ain't got no time to be a side show. You have no time for side shows. It's hot. You're in a bowl. You practice. You go back. You study tape. You go to practice. You lift. Those guys may actually need that. And Pittsburgh, that's why I'm hopeful for them. You got nothing but football in Pennsylvania and a city that absolutely freaks out about it. If you're not, I want to go, go ahead. ahead. And I just want to jump in before we go. Ron Wells had a good question that I really wanted to get to. Says, Will Quan Alexander be back on the defense? I have not heard his name once. He did have a significant injury, uh, and he's he's up there. He gave everything that he had on the field. I don't know how many more chances he's going to get. And mm. I'm not sure what to do with this call name, but I am happy to have the first time somebody from Bulgaria on the show Bulgaria. here with us. Oh, yeah. That's right. From Sofia, Bulgaria. Um, real near Serbia, my ancestral homeland. It's like hey. south into the Is east. it? Yeah. Well yeah, traveled border, day in. There's a border. That's right, pal. <laughs> all right, let's do this. Uh, let's do let's do a Thursday episode of this. All right, uh, let's do that. I'm here for that, DK, and answer more of these questions too. I have more answers for you guys on what I see on Justin Fields' fumbles. Look them up and just add context to those numbers people are saying to you. Could he prevent one or two? Yes. Tuck it ball. Tuck the ball and get down. But but homework for you guys. Go look at his fumbles and tell me what he's trying to do. Let's do it tomorrow, everybody. Bye bye. First time homework's been administered out here. I like that. Oops. I like that. Ruler to the knuckles. If you don't. <laughs> <laughs>